Hello and welcome to Bloke on the Range, and as you might guess from this panoply of bolt-action rifles on the table in front of me, we're going to do some mechanical nerdery today, some good old-school Bloke on the Range stuff. What we're going to talk about is cock on open versus cock on close. Well, not so much versus, because one's not better than the other. Uh, they both have different optimal applications, um, and we're going to kind of talk about that as we go along. But for those not in the know, cock on open is where the firing pin is essentially fully retracted as the bolt is opened. And then when the bolt is closed, it just gets left behind on the sear. And cock on closing is the opposite. When you open the bolt, it's just withdrawn, just a tiny little touch so that the firing pin doesn't protrude out of the bolt face for safety reasons. And then the cocking piece is left on the sear at the last point of the forward travel of the bolt before it's locked. So this is a Lee Enfield number four, which is cock on close, and uh, representing the, uh, the sort of Mauser 98 derivatives, uh, we have a Springfield 1903 here. Um, I've tried to limit the number of guns on the table. Manipulating them is gonna be difficult, but uh, yeah, we've got a Mauser type cock on close, which is a US model 1917. We've got an Enfield type cock on open, number eight. We've got a modern Tika cock on open. We've also got a rare modern cock on close, a BMS cam, and we have a Soviet TOS 17 uh, 22 rifle. Now, let's get into the nitty gritty. What can each of them do? Fundamentally, Cock on closing, in terms of uh, a battle rifle, is generally faster, simply because there's a less resistance to opening the bolt. I mean, you can literally do that. So all the rearward force that's going into it is being used for primary extraction. So that initial withdrawal of the, uh, of the case in the chamber if it's getting stuck. And then you're gonna be working it like you mean it anyway. So you shouldn't even be feeling uh, the, uh, the striker, the striker spring being tensioned as you slap it forward like that. Um, it also has the advantage of being able to work with very, very, very short, uh, sorry, not short term, very, very, very low amounts of rotation. So uh, this is a BMS cam rifle. Uh, this is based around an L15 bolt head and barrel extension, so it's got a 22 and a half degree bolt throw. So that's as far as it goes. Primary extraction on this is with a lever. Um, effectively, there's not enough rotation to do everything you need to do with a cock on uh, a cock on open because there's only really just enough to withdraw. Uh, the striker from the bolt face. You don't want it protruding from the from the bolt face because as a round ri uh, rides up, it might get stuck on it. But also, safety reasons, you don't want something sticking out that's going to be in contact with the primer. There's a risk of a slam fire, and a slam fire before it's locked is a very, very, very bad thing indeed, and in and can result in you getting a bolt in your face. So effectively, if you're using this kind of tiny amount of bolt rotation, you have no you have no other option. This has to be cock on close. Where some people come unstuck with cock on close, if they're used to cock on opening, they press till they feel resistance. They're used to pressing the bolt forward until they feel resistance and then turning it, but here you can't, so then you end up with these horrible people and people, and people struggling with it. But the, the simple answer to that is, work it like you mean it. So to move over to cock on open now, as you lift the bolt handle, you can see the striker being withdrawn. And then when you cycle the action, there's less resistance to closing because it's already been, uh, been done. What this enables you to do, and it's not always exploited, it enables you to have a much uh, more powerful striker spring. Uh, this is exploited in Mauser 98 actions. Their striker springs are quite chunky. Um, on the Springfield, it isn't though, because what they've gone for here, and they've taken it over from the, uh, from the US Crag rifle, uh, is they want a second strike capability. So click. Um, didn't go bang. I, I don't, I don't. With a hang fire, you want to leave the bolt locked. You can strike it again just by pulling that back, 
and it's never unlocked. So if it, uh, if it happens to, to, to be smoldering and then go off as you're pulling it back, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, it's still locked, you're not gonna get it in your face. Now what this allows you to do even further, if we take a modern rifle, is you can go for a much more chunky spring and a much shorter striker travel. Um, so this is attached to the striker. It doesn't go very far at all. So what this enables you to do is have a very fast lock time. And the lock time is the time from the sear releasing the striker to the, to the primer getting hit. And uh, on old military actions, you've got quite a lot of travel. These springs are reasonably chunky. This is actually a chunkier spring than in the Springfield there. Um, when you've been shooting something like this a lot, or a target rifle, I mean, some of the British target rifles, uh, they've got, there's not a conventional spring, it's a stack of cupped washers, and they're really, really stiff. Uh, and they're usually a four lug, so you've only got 45 degree bolt travel. You can feel the difference when you're shooting that this, it, I mean, it's milliseconds, but it's perceivable that things like this are, are slower on the lock time. And uh, just a little example. You can have, with an Enfield system, you can have a short striker travel like that, cock on open. The number eights are all like this. Um, I've also seen adaptations for number four based target rifles, which were using this system, which were, uh, which were cock on open to, to shorten, the, uh, shorten the lock time. Because if you compare that to that in terms of it's very difficult manipulating all of this around a camera tripod. Um, it's much shorter. It's like a third, probably, of the um, of the distance. So that's kind of the principles in use. Now let's look at a little bit of mechanics here because there's some other things going on. So if we take a Lee Enfield bolt, it's very, very simple. You just got a certain amount of cam surface there just to withdraw the striker. And then it's got a notch there. And that's what the cocking piece sits in. It's, it's unlikely in use that that's gonna be knocked and then end up like that, giving you a situation where you can't close the bolt. Now what's quite common on Mauser type cock on opening systems is that there's an interlock system to prevent the cocking piece from being turned. Because if you look there, you've got this great big long cam track, and then it's just sitting on a, on a shoulder. You can have a little bit of a notch. And in fact, in the uh, Italian Carcano rifles, it's just a little bit of a notch that can get worn and can get knocked. And uh, Ian of Forgotten Weapons had uh, a match video with the Carcano where that happened on the clock. So there's typically an interlock here. And what this does on the Springfield is there's a, uh, on the side of the receiver, this goes in. And so, and so that lock is only freed once that button, that little camming button is pressed in, it's cammed in by the side of the receiver. And then to reset this, we pull it back round and I'm gonna have to push that, <clears throat> put it back around like that. Um, it should be noted that the uh, Mauser 71 action is cock on open. Um, and then they go to cock on close until we get back to the Mauser 98. So they kind of played with, uh, kind of played with both there. Now, if we compare to a P14 or an M17, so uh, this is a very, very similar system. In fact, there's an awful lot of Springfield and an awful lot of Mauser 98 in uh, the P14 and M17. We've got a shallower cam track to withdraw the striker. We don't have an interlock mechanism because we don't need one. And we've got a big, big, great, big, enormous sort of rest notch uh, for the cocking piece there. Uh, that's never gonna wear. And we can have that because what's gonna happen when we close the bolt is that the um, striker, sorry, the, um, the bent, the, cock, the bent is the, the, the part of the cocking piece that interacts with the sear, which is the bit in the rifle that uh, goes Flippy, 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 flippy. Um, by the time we turn the bolt, that is miles back. Now, uh, this is another interesting one. These springs 
in the P14s and M17s tend to be a little chunkier than you'd expect. Um, and in fact, first time I ever used one of these was a, was a, a target rifle conversion in the UK and I was 14 years old and uh, I actually struggled to close the bolt pushing against the spring. So it's like, so we've got an interesting point where we've got a cock on, uh, a cock on close that's really using a spring that's too chunky for it. it, should be on a cock on open. And here we have a cock on open that's using a spring that you'd expect on a cock on close simply because we want the we want the second strike capability. And then finally, just to give a little, little bit of love to the, uh, to the small ball world, we have cock on close on this uh, TOS 17. Um, she seems to be more or less derived from uh, various British um, 22 rifles of earlier times. Now for completeness, I thought it might be nice to have a look at the difference between a number four bolt on the right here and a number eight bolt on the left here, as far as the cocking piece is concerned, um, and, and the cam track. This actually doesn't have much of a, of a rest notch. It's really just a tiny little bit there. Oop, focus. As opposed to here, where we've got a great big one again, that's that's never gonna wear, but these are, these are Small ball target rifles, we did use them in rapid fire at school. Um, in fact, the first ever shot I fired was with a number eight. Um, and we were doing 10 rounds a minute, single loading. Never had a problem with the cocking pieces turning on these. Um, but yeah, I thought that would be nice. So I hope that was at least vaguely interesting. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to all our supporters who keep the channel uh, chugging along. If you're not already a financial supporter and would like to send us a little tip or, or anything so that we can keep doing this sort of stuff, uh, we are uh, crowdfunding on Patreon and Player. Links in the description below. All help gratefully received. And if not, just please like and subscribe and share our videos. And uh, see you again sometime. Bye.